Hello everyone, today I want to share with you with a workspace for my second grader. So if you are a homeschool parent um, or you are a mom who wants to set up a workstation, a homework station for a child that goes to school, today I'm going to share some ideas. So this desk is actually set up here in my bedroom um, because this is the most quiet area in the home and also because I really didn't have room to set it up in her room. So. The first thing that I have here is her desk, and I got this desk in Amazon, um, but a little tip is to check Craigslist, because you can probably find it for like $15 to $20. I don't remember, I think I got this one for like $40, $50, I'll link it below. So down here I have a little bungee cord here. And when I got it, it said that it helps students with concentration and helps children who have sensory disorders. Um, it helps children with ADHD to concentrate. I didn't get it for that, though. I got it because I wanted to have a footrest for her so that she, her feet were kind of like hanging. Um, this is the best setup in height. And so this was the best setup for that. So I'm glad that it does all those things, but I got it just as a footrest. Over here, I have her workbooks on this side. Her notebooks on this side. Here we have a coin cup because in Saxon math you have to count coins every day and you need a coin cup. I have a ruler in there and a pencil. That's all that's needed. Um, then I have this chair. I got the chair also in Amazon and it's high adjustable. So potentially this desk can last up until the child is in high school or ready to graduate, 18 years old. Um, so it's great to have a desk that you can use for so long. Over here I have a little strip, it's a number line, we can use it for addition, for different things. And um, I am actually giving these for free for those that um, signed up for my um, Patreon Gold account. I'm going to be setting, setting those out for free to you guys. Uh, I have a couple, I have I think 20 left, so look forward to that email you guys. Okay, so here on the bulletin board, I have... Um, her pictures that she draws, um, pictures of the family. I wanted to really make this personal for her. And so she gets to put all her things that she loves on here so that she can look at it every day. Then I have some little reminders. I have like days of the week, months of the year chart. Um, I have count by twos, count by fives, count by tens. I have a hundreds chart. I have an activity schedule. Um, and I'm going to go over this in another video in detail on how we structure our homeschool week because I really think that deserves a whole new video. <laughs> Here we have um, the subjects that are being covered every day and this is actually in a, in a laminate sheet protector. So she could take a dry erase marker and just mark off what she's doing. Although we mainly use this as a checklist as just for me mainly to see what is it that needs to be covered today. Um, and, and it's a great way to keep perspective of what needs to be covered what's been covered already and um, it helps the child to see what what they have done and what's left for the day okay so here is her spelling words for the week she gets 10 new spelling words every week and this is in a pocket chart I think I got it in eBay and then um, I will talk about which curriculum we're using for her for second grade let me know if that's of interest in the comments below um, so I have them here so that she can look at them throughout the week practice writing them practice writing sentences with them, play little games with them, and so on. Um, and then I take them down whenever she has a spelling test at the end of the week. Um, to practice place value, we have these um, little pocket chart that we got in Amazon. And so um, over here, she uses these straws to, to, um, to do this. So for example, 400, she will put four straws in here. Um, and this is a great way to practice place value. For two tens, she'll place two of them. For five, she'll place five straws in there. Over here, I have the cards. Every day, she gets a new number. To give this more of a challenge, I also have her write the expanded form of the number at the bottom here. I put dry erase stickers from the Target that I got. But you can also place um, laminate a white sheet of paper and just tape it on. Um, and I have her write it, so like 400 plus 20 plus 5 equals 425. I actually got two of these charts because once she masters um, this, I'm going to move on to the thousands, to the hundred thousands, and so on. And I keep it in this little cup and it's thumbtacked to the wall here. 
Okay, so moving on over here. Here we have like a little workbox system for her. Um, she doesn't do much Montessori stuff anymore, but I still have some hands-on activities that she does um, on a weekly basis. Over here we have some curriculum, like some teacher's manuals, and we have a, a timer to time our lessons, and her little pouch with all her supplies that she needs. Um, over here we have three activities that we have out at any given time. And depending on our lesson plan, they can last one day, two days, three days, a week maybe sometimes. So it really just depends on how long I've set that activity up for. Here we have the activity that we have set out for today. So these are um, setting, creating compound words. I got this at the Dollar Tree. I laminated these. They're supposed to be stickers. And she creates words like sun, flower, sun, flower. And she goes on creating these compound words. And then she will write them on a piece of paper. Here we have practicing syllables. I got these at themeasuredmom.com for free. I'll link these below as well if I can find them. And then she counts the syllables and then she places a counter on it. I got these little blocks. I believe I got them in the dollar store, but I, ha I don't remember anymore. All right, and then I got this geography activity for her. And this is from Lakeshore Learning. And here are some cards. This is a self-correcting puzzle of landforms. And so we have a lot of different landforms, and this is not even all of them. It's a huge box of different landforms. And then she is to match the definition and the name. So here's peninsula, valley, mountain, and then these are the definitions. And this is self-correct, and so the child is going to self-correct. And she just creates the puzzle this way. All right, so those are the three activities that I have. Down here I have a fun box. So what I call it, it's like a, you know, she has her sticker books, her coloring books, any little things. Right now she's working on a, a Christmas list and flipping things out. And just any little thing that she's working on, just fun things to go in this little box. So when she's done with school, she can go and do anything that she's working on, anything, anything fun that she wants to do. Alright, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video of our homeschool space for our second grader. Um, this has allowed her to work independently to work without being interrupted, without being disturbed by her siblings. She's able to get a lot more work done. She's able to get focused work done. I play classical music while she's here, some instrumental music, and she really is able to focus and I really love it. So if you have kids that are, I would say six and up, this is great setup. Even younger sometimes you can try and see how they respond. Um, I look forward to sharing with you more on the curriculum that we're using, on the activity schedules, on the weekly schedule. If I missed anything, let me know. And if you want to see anything else that I didn't mention here, let me know below in the comments as well. And I look forward to continue learning with you, to continue sharing with you. Until the next video. Bye-bye. So let me share with you guys the meal menu here. So we have everything by breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's go over breakfast. So for breakfast, every day 